Thank you. Well, there are some things in at the work uh, you you uh, do. It's small things, and in this case, you know, you uh, you go to work one day, and somebody comes in and says, "Can you glue these things together? You've never seen them before." Um, and so you say, "Oh, okay." So. And that's what happened. In this case, my boss, David, um, a, cur 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 a curator, a pa pa paleontologist at the Royal Ontario Mu Museum, came in the lab. He had these three little bones in his hands, and he said, do you think you can put these two, two together? Uh, my colleague and I, Michael, uh, who's uh, a, a cur curator at the Cleveland Mu Museum, um, have been trying to put this together for eight years, and and we can't seem to do it. We don't think it goes to together, but we thought we'd give you one try to get it to uh, try it, but we don't think it's going to work. So he left the lab, and I said, okay. So right away, within within ten, well, within a few uh, a few minutes, I got one piece together, and I thought, well. You know, they've been trying for eight years, and I got one piece. <laughs> so um, a few minutes later, I thought, well, I was taking a look, a look at it, and I thought, well, you know, this thing's only about this big. And I thought, well, there's not many other places it can go. So I was playing around with it, and I thought, okay, maybe I'll put it right here. So sure enough, I placed it in there, and I showed the, there was a little bit of a connection, maybe about two or three mil, 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 mil millimeters wide. And it fit right in, and I turned it around and said, "Oh, okay, there, there it is." So, but then I realized he didn't really tell me what what to do with it. So I put it down. I went to the office. I went down, down, down the hall, and I said, "I said, David, I got it together. What do you want me to do with it?" And he goes, "What do you mean?" He said, and I said, "Well, you know, you told me to put it together, and I got it together." And I said, "Do you want me to glue it?" And he goes, yes. So I said, OK. So I went back to the lab. And so I glued it together. And I re reinforced it with plaster just to make sure it wouldn't fall, fall, fall apart. And so I brought it to him. And I said, well, here, here it is. And then and Michael was, was there visiting that uh, day. And so he looked at it. And then suddenly Michael and David were just all over this thing. And they were looking at it. And, so I said, oh, OK, my job's done. I'm gone. So I went back to, to uh, the lab, and I just forgot about it. So two or, two or three months later, uh, David come, come, comes into the lab, and he says, do you remember that little jaw that, that you put together? He said, those, those, those three pieces. And I said, yeah. I said, and he said, well, it turns out it's, it's really important, and I'm going to write a paper on it. And I said, great. you know." It's, so and he said, well, and he said you might you might have to do some some interviews. And I'm going, oh, well, what do you mean? And he said, and he said well, you know, I'm, I mean, this thing's really important. And I and I said, well, I don't do interviews. I'm, you know, I'm, I work behind the scenes. I I'm not in front of the camera or on you know or giving talks or anything. So, and so he says, well, he said, well, this is so important that. You know, we're, we, we've decided that, you know, we're going to name the dinosaur af, 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 after you. So I, so I went, I, like I said, well, I didn't, know what, I didn't know what to say, just like here today. So I thought, well, you know, and he said, that's why you might have to do these interviews. And I thought, well, you know, I have a stutter, and I've sort of avoided having to get up and talk in front of, in front of people. But... I said, well, OK. So, so that's, that's where it was left. And, I, and I, so there was a couple months later that it finally came out in the press. And you know, then you know, and David was doing lots and lots of interviews and stuff. And then suddenly, it was my turn. <laughs> so so I, guess, I guess now it comes to like, how does a guy like me who has two fine art degrees from Guelph and Windsor, and how do they end up working in paleontology? How do you end up in, in, the, vert, in, in the vert paleo lab for 24 years? And I thought, well, you know, it, it's like, well, back in 1989, 
I was unemployed, finished school, and I had heard that my sculpture prof at the University of Guelph, his assistant was going to do his, do his master's degree. So I thought, oh, well, maybe there's a job. I was looking for a job. So I went to see him for a, a visit just to see if I could fill that job. And so I got there and he said, well, sorry, it's already been taken. So I thought, well, you know, I tried and that was, that was fine. So I went home. So about two or three days later, I get a phone call from, from him saying, there's a job at the ROM that's come up um, in paleontology, and I think you should apply for it. And I went, really? Paleontology? Like, you know, that's science, right? It's not fine art. It's not making sculpture or painting or anything. So he says, just go and just try. So I said, okay. So I went and I had a chat with the head tech, and sure, and sure, sure enough, I, I was there, and it was only a contract, but that's fine. So I thought, okay. So when I got into the job, I realized pretty quickly that the skill set I had learned is so compatible with what I was doing. As a paleotech, you've got to look at shape and pattern, and you've got to focus on the details of things. You've got to focus on, on how things fit fit together, how things look. And so, that's, and, and so that's where the fine art meets the science. In, um, in university, I, I did a lot of different things, especially in, in terms of my art skills and stuff. And I found that um, it, it's so compatible in searching and things. It's so compatible when, when working with dinosaur bones and putting things together and digging them up, and it's surprising. So in, in, since, 19, since 2008, we've been going uh, to southern Alberta and looking in the, the, the badlands for fossils. So uh, this is pretty typical of um, a bad land site. Most of, of the time, you're going out there, walking up and down hills, just trying to find little bits, little bits and pieces of fossils coming out of, 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 of the ground. This is pretty typical of what you see. Um, it's mostly rock. There are bits and pieces of fossil bone in there. But, and, that, and that's where the, the search image comes, comes, comes in. When you're looking through this stuff, you're looking for something that's different, something that is unique, something that has a certain shape that stands out from everything else around it, like that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a little tiny piece of jaw, believe it or not. Um, and, that's where, and that's where the fine art comes, comes in. I remember I was on my very first dig uh, in 1990. We were in British Columbia, and I remember going to the head tech and going, okay, can you tell me what I'm looking for? I just want to know what I get a sense of when I'm out there, what I'm supposed to see. And he goes, you'll know it when you see it. <laughs> and, that, and I said, well, no, no, no. I mean, I'm serious. I mean, I need to know what I'm looking for. So you just give me an idea, shape, color, what am I looking for? And he goes, no, no, you'll know it when you see it. And I go, well, I always equate it to trying to find a needle in a haystack. But you don't really know you're looking for a needle. But the minute you see it, then you go, oh, that's what I was looking for. And sure enough, the minute I went out there, and the minute I found what bone looks like in that type of rock, it suddenly was everywhere. And I thought, well, how could I miss that? How could I not see this around me? And I think that's what the fine art training does, is that at the time, it taught me how to see. It taught me how to spot those differences. I was, I was doing it in school to make art, to make paintings, to do drawings. You're looking at models. You're copying stuff, stuff down. In sculpture, you're, you're doing the nuances when doing a figure. So in he, and so in here, I thought, wow, that's, you know, it's pretty compatible. But now, suddenly, here I was looking 
for, for the first time on, on this dig, and it was everywhere. And I had found that other, Bob, uh, other students and other people who were along for, for the trip who had studied science, and they were bi biologists or zo zo zoologists, they couldn't see anything. And even when you say, okay, this is what it is, and, and they would go, okay, and then they walk off and they just walk over stuff. And you think, whoa, whoa, wait, you, you, you're missing it. It's right there. And they were like, and so, and that's why I think the, the fine art side came through really strong. Now, and also in this, this here, as in that little tiny jaw, there were, it's all about how to see things and how to put things to, to together as well. Most fossils we, have, we have find, are in bits and pieces, and they're, they come in many, many pieces. There are times where it, you know, you've got hundreds of pieces in front of you. And I think that what the fine art does, it teaches me, and, what, and maybe that's innate in me, is that I had a sense I could see in 3D. I can see things in my mind. I can take a look at a skeleton or a piece of bone coming out of the rock, and I can, I can visualize, I can say, okay, I know what those bone bones are. It's lying on its left side. It's going into the rock this, this way here. And other people I, I'd known had come in and they go like, well, what's that? I know it's bone, but, and so I'd get down and say, well, this is this, is this part of the bone. It's part of the ilium, it's part of the hips, or it's going in this way. It's lying on its right side and they're going in and they just look at me and they go, how do you, how do you know that? And I go, well, because I can, I see those little tiny shapes, and I see those little, the, the processes, or all the little bumps and stuff on the bone, and I go like, I know what that bone is, and it's very different from all the other stuff. I know what type of animal I'm looking for. So in this case, it's, it just comes in, I can see this stuff in my head, and that comes in really handy when going out to the field. It also comes in, in real handy when uh, doing molding and casting. And I find that my job mostly involves a process. And I love a process, if anything. I am typically a process guy. I love how things go together. And I learn from that. And I look at things and I go, how'd they make that? How'd they put that two together? And I keep it and I understand and I try to figure it out and I use it and I have it so I always know that I never know when, when you're gonna use it to solve a problem. And in this case, whether it's molding or casting or cleaning the, the uh, bone, you never know when you're gonna need something. And I find that also when I was young, I, I loved puzzles. My dad always had a puzzle at, at Christmas time. And so we would, as a family go and we'd try to put this puzzle to, uh, together on our spare time, whenever we had a time, we can go and try to put it together. But I would challenge myself. I would go and say, okay, I'm not gonna touch a piece of puzzle unless I know exactly where it goes. So I'm gonna study, I'm gonna look, shape, color, where it goes in the picture. And I would, and I would go there and I'd say, okay, that goes there, because if I touched it, I would have to find a connection for it. And little did I know at that, at, young, at that young age, I was training myself for this job, for just exactly this job. So in this case, you know, every fossil we find has a plan. And every fossil is u u uh, unique in itself. It's weak in some areas, it's strong in some areas. And whether we're digging it out of the ground we're, we're, we're tra trans transporting it back to our field camp, or I'm cleaning the, the rock off, or I'm molding and casting it for here, for display in the gallery, or even mounting it. I always found that you have to develop your own plan, and you need that whole broad array of tools to plan for that, because you never know what each fossil needs. And it's so you, uh, you unique that even fossils from the same area will have different plans. In 2011, and also in 2011, we had this task. We had found a, uh, a skeleton at the base of this hill, 
and it was, um, it looked like a brand new skeleton. We had collected about 10 or 12 pieces, and we also saw that more pieces went into the hill. And we, and of course, you know, we wanted the most we can get. We think it's a brand new, uh, new animal. You know, it's going to get a new name and everything else. We thought this is great, but we needed to take the hill down. <laughs> and so everybody in the team was sort of like, okay, <laughs> how are we going to do this? So as is typical um, in some of these cases, David and Michael, who were, who were there at the time, they turned to me and said, okay, what's the plan? And I go, okay. <laughs> and I did remember um, the early Egyptians on how they built their pyramids. And in one case, the step pyramid. And I knew we had worked in, in this type of rock for many years. And I know that it's unstable in some areas and it's pretty risky to work in because you never know, especially when you're digging into a hill about what's gonna come down on top of you. So a plan, we, so we needed a plan for the next year because we're just gonna take, we only had a limited amount of time and it's, we need a plan to take this hill, hill, hill uh, down. So again, like I say, they turned to me. So I said, well, we start at the top. They wanted to expand the quarry. They wanted to push the quarry back two meters and expand it about four meters. And so I said, well, uh, <laughs> That means we do have to start at the top and we have to push it back pretty far. So I said, well, so that's the plan. We're gonna step py pyramid this down and we're gonna see if, and what we're, I guess what we're, we're worried about is how the erosion is gonna happen across n this previous winter. Because once we cut it down, we wanna make sure when we come back the next, next year that it's not gonna have a big old pile of dirt on top of it than what it is now. So that was the plan. So we did, so, so the next year we came out and we started to dig in the town. It took us four weeks. We got down to about a meter above this, the uh, specimen. And so this past year we came out and dug down the last meter, which took about another two weeks. And we found more of that uh, specimen. So in most cases in paleontology, there's a lot of firsts for everything. And in this case, and in, in paleontology, in per, per, tick, 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 you learn there's, there's more firsts than, 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 than most. Um, and I think, you know, it's been a, it's been a great 24 years at, at the, the ARAM. And um, I'd like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>